Rotary Rocket Company was a rocketry company that developed the Roten concept in the late 1990s as a fully reusable single stage to orbit SSTO manned spacecraft. The design was initially conceived by Gary Hudson, who formed the company to commercialize the concept. The Roten was intended to reduce costs of launching payloads into low Earth orbit by a factor of 10. The company gathered considerable venture capital from angel investors and opened a factory headquartered in a 45,000 square foot 4,200 square meters facility at Mojave Air and Space Port in Mojave, California. The fuselage for their vehicles was made by Scaled Composites, at the same airport, while the company developed the novel engine design and helicopter-like landing system. A full-scale test vehicle made three hover flights in 1999, but the company exhausted its funds and closed its doors in early 2001. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Rotary rocket design evolution. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter to orbit. Gary Hudson's and Bevan McKinney's initial concept was to merge a launch vehicle with a helicopter. Spinning rotor blades, powered by tip jets, would lift the vehicle in the earliest stage of launch. Once the air density thinned to the point that helicopter flight was impractical, the vehicle would continue its ascent on pure rocket power, with the rotor acting as a giant turbopump. Calculations showed that the helicopter blades modestly increased the effective specific impulse (ISP) by approximately 20 to 30 seconds, essentially only carrying the blades into orbit for free. Thus, there was no overall gain from this method during ascent. However, the blades could be used to soft land the vehicle, so its landing system carried no additional cost. One problem found during research at Rotary was that once the vehicle left the atmosphere additional thrust would be necessary. Thus multiple engines would be needed at the base as well as at the rotor tips. This initial version of the Roten had been designed with the small communication satellite market in mind. However, this market crashed, signaled by the failure of Iridium communications. Consequently, the Roten concept needed to be redesigned for heavier payloads. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter from orbit The revised and redesigned Roten concept was a cone-shaped launch vehicle, with a helicopter rotor on top for use only during landing. An internal cargo bay could be used both for carrying payloads to orbit and bringing others back to Earth. The projected price to orbit of this design was given as $1,000 per kilogram of payload, less than one-tenth of the then-current launch price. Payload capacity was limited to a relatively modest 6,000 pounds 2,700 kilograms. The revised version would have used a unique rotating annular aerospike engine. The engine and base of the launch vehicle would spin at high speed 720 revolutions per minute to pump fuel and oxidizer to the rim by the rotation. Unlike the landing rotor, due to the shallow angle of the nozzles in the base rotor, the rotation speed self-limited and required no control system. Since the density of the LOX liquid oxygen was higher than that of the kerosene, extra pressure was available with the LOX, so it would have been used to cool the engine's throat and other components, rather than using the kerosene as the coolant as in a conventional LOX-kerosene rocket. However, at the high G levels at the outer edge of the rotating engine block, clarity on how LOX would work as a coolant was both unknown and difficult to validate. That added one layer of risk. In addition, the rotating exhaust acted as a wall at the outer edge of the engine base, lowering the temperature of the base to below ambient due to ejector pump effect and creating an suction cup at the bottom in atmosphere. This could be alleviated using makeup gas to develop base pressure, requiring an additional rocket engine to fill up the base of the main rocket engine. Similar problems would have occurred in a conventional aerospike engine, but there, natural recirculation plus use of the turbopump gas generator's exhaust as the makeup gas would have largely alleviated the problem for free. 
At the rim, 96 miniature jets would exhaust the burning propellants locks and kerosene around the rim of the base of the vehicle, which gained the vehicle extra thrust at high altitude, acting as a zero-length truncated aerospike nozzle. A similar system with non-rotating engines was studied for the N-1 rocket. That application had a much smaller base area, and did not create the suction effect a larger peripheral engine induces. The Roten engine had a projected vacuum ISP specific impulse of approximately 355 seconds, 3.5 kilonewtons s per kilogram, which is very high for a LOX kerosene engine and a thrust to weight ratio of 150, which is extremely light. During re entry, the base also served as a water cooled heat shield. This was theoretically a good way to survive re entry, particularly for a lightweight reusable vehicle. However, using water as a coolant would require converting it into superheated steam, at high temperatures and pressures, and there were concerns about micrometeorite damage on orbit puncturing the pressure vessel, causing the re-entry shield to fail. These concerns were resolved using a failure-resistant massively redundant flow system, created using thin metal sheets chemically etched with a pattern of micropores forming a channel system that was robust against failure and damage. In addition, cooling was achieved two different ways, one way was the vaporization of the water, but the second was even more significant, and was due to the creation of a layer of cool steam surrounding the base surface, reducing the ability to heat. Further, the water metering system would have to be extremely reliable, giving one drop per second per square inch, and was achieved via a trial-error design approach on real hardware. By the end of the ROTON program, some hardware had been built and tested. The re-entry trajectory was to be trimmed, similar to the Soyuz, to minimize the G-loads on the passengers. And the ballistic coefficient was better for the Roten and could be better tailored. When the Soyuz trim system failed and it went full ballistic, the G-levels did rise significantly but without incident to the passengers. The vehicle was also unique in planning to use its helicopter-style rotors for landing, rather than wings or parachutes. This concept allowed controlled landings unlike parachutes, and it was one-fifth the weight of fixed wings. Another advantage was that a helicopter could land almost anywhere, whereas winged spaceplanes such as the shuttle had to make it back to the runway. The rotor blades were to be powered by peroxide-tip rockets. The rotor blades were to be deployed before re entry. Some questions were raised about whether the blades would survive until landing. The initial plan was to have them almost vertical, but that was found to be unstable as they needed to drop lower and lower and spin faster for stability. The heating rates went up dramatically and the airflow became more head on. The implication of that was that the blades went from a lightly heated piece of hardware to one that either had to be actively cooled or made of sick or other refractory material. The idea of popping out the blades became much more attractive at this point, and initial studies were made for that option. This rotor design concept was not without precedent. In 1955, one of five Soviet designs for planned suborbital piloted missions was to include rocket-tipped rotors as its landing system. On May 1, 1958 these plans were dropped as a decision was made to proceed directly to orbital flights. Rotary rocket designed and pressure tested an exceptionally lightweight but strong composite LOX tank. It survived a test program which involved it being pressure cycled and ultimately deliberately shot to test its ignition sensitivity. This composite construction was a world first. A new engine In June 1999, Rotary Rocket announced that it would use a derivative of the fast track engine under development at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, instead of the company's own unconventional spinning engine design. Reportedly, the company had been unable to convince investors that its engine design was viable, the composite structure and gyrocopter re entry was an easier sell. At the same time as this change, the company laid off about a third of its employees, lowering approximate headcount from 60 to 40. 
At this point, the company planned to begin its commercial launch service sometime in 2001. Although the company had raised $30 million, it still needed to raise an additional $120 million before entering service. The Atmospheric Test Vehicle ATV. A full-size, 63 feet 19 meters tall, atmospheric test vehicle ATV, was built under contract by Scaled Composites for use in hover test flights. The $2.8 million ATV was not intended as an all-up test article, since it had no rocket engine and no heat shielding. The ATV was rolled out of its Mojave hangar on March 1, 1999, bearing an FAA registry of N990RR. The rotor head was salvaged from a crashed Sikorsky S-58, at a price of $50,000 as opposed to as much as $1 million for a new head. Each rotor was powered by a 350 lbf 1560 N hydrogen peroxide jet, as intended for the orbital vehicle. The rotor assemblage was tested in a rock quarry before installation on the ATV. The ATV flew three successful test flights in 1999. The pilot for these three flights was Marty Saragal KLIJN and the co-pilot was Brian Binney, who later gained fame as pilot of scaled composite spaceship own on its second X-Prize flight. The ATV made its first flight on July 28. This flight consisted of three vertical hops totaling 4 minutes 40 seconds in duration and reaching a maximum altitude of 8 feet 2.4 meters. The pilots found the flying extremely challenging for a number of reasons. Visibility in the cockpit was so restricted that the pilots nicknamed it the Batcave. The view of the ground was entirely obstructed, so the pilots had to rely on a sonar altimeter to judge ground proximity. The entire craft had a low rotational inertia, and torque from the spinning rotor blades made the body spin, unless counteracted by your thrust in the opposite direction. The second flight, on September 16, was a continuous hover flight lasting 2 minutes 30 seconds, reaching a maximum altitude of 20 feet. Meters. The sustained flight was made possible by the installation of more powerful rotor tip thrusters and an autothrottle. The third and last flight was made on October 12. The ATV flew down the flight line at Mojave Air and Spaceport, covering 4,300 feet 1 meters in its flight and rising to a maximum altitude of 75 feet 23 meters. The speed was as high as 53 miles per hour, 85 kilometers per hour. This test revealed some instability in translational flight. A fourth test was planned to simulate a full autorotative descent. The ATV would climb to an altitude 10,000 feet, 3,050 meters under its own power before throttling back and returning for a soft landing. At this point, given that further funding was then unlikely, safety considerations prevented the test being attempted. Topic: Criticism of the design. Rotary Rocket failed due to lack of funding, but some have suggested that the design itself was inherently flawed. The rotary rocket did fly three test flights and a composite propellant tank survived a full test program, however these tests revealed problems. For instance, the ATV demonstrated that landing the rotary rocket was tricky, even dangerous. Test pilots have a rating system, the Cooper Harper Rating Scale, for vehicles between 1 and 10 that relates to difficulty to pilot. The Roten ATV scored a 10. The vehicle simulator was found to be almost unflyable by anyone except the rotary test pilots, and even then there were short periods where the vehicle was out of control. Other aspects of the flight plan remained unproven, and it is unknown whether Roten could have developed sufficient performance to reach orbit with a single stage and return, although on paper this might have been possible. These doubts led some of the aerospace community to dismiss the rotary rocket concept as a pipe dream. Whether the concept would have worked successfully remains open to speculation. Topic: 
Topic: The Venture's Last Days. Engine development ceased in 2000, reportedly two weeks before a full-scale test was due. The vehicle failed to secure launch contracts and Rotary Rocket closed its doors in 2001. The timing of the venture was unfortunate, the Iridium Communications venture was nearing bankruptcy, and the space industry in general was experiencing financial stress. Ultimately, the company did not attract sufficient funding, even though numerous individuals provided a total of $33 million of support, including writer Tom Clancy. Some of the engineers that worked there have since set up other rocketry ventures, notably XCOR Aerospace, T, Space and Space Launch. The atmospheric test vehicle was to be displayed at Classic Rotors Museum, a helicopter museum near San Diego, California, but an attempt to move it there on May 9, 2003 via a short line sling load under an Army Reserve CH-47 Chinook failed when the Roten began to oscillate at airspeeds above 35 knots 65 km per hour. Instead, the Mojave Airport Administration worked to keep this historic vehicle at Mojave, and on November 10, 2006, the Roten was moved to its permanent display location at the intersection of Airport Boulevard and Sabovich Road. To many, the Roten represents the program that launched Mojave into the space age, and this theme was echoed during the dedication ceremony that took place during the Veterans Day celebration on November 11, at which Brian Binney was the keynote speaker. The Rotary rocket hangars are now occupied by the National Test Pilot School. Topic Roten C9 specifications overall dimensions height 63 feet 19.2 meters maximum diameter 22 feet 6.7 meters cargo bay dimensions length 16.7 feet 5.1 meters diameter 12 feet 3.7 meters total mass estimated 400,000 pounds 180,000 kilograms low earth orbit payload projected 7,000 pounds 3,000 180 kilograms orbit apogee projected 160 miles 260 kilometers engine thrust 6950 pounds 30860n engine specific impulse back 340 seconds number of engines 72 projections are based on estimates reported in aviation week and space technology on october 5 1998 also see